What is going on? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video is gonna be a little bit different than some of my other content, not talking about video, social media marketing, personal branding, or anything like that. But I asked the other day over on my Instagram, which if you're not following me, go ahead and go give me a follow over there. I asked to give me uh, a few questions to do a Q&A video here on YouTube. So got some really good questions for you guys today that I'm gonna be answering. Really excited to answer some of these questions and for you guys to get to know me a little bit better. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So first question comes from actually the guy who inspired me to make this Q&A, Jordan Pulmano. How are you balancing getting settled into a new city slash place while also keeping the biz rolling? So for those of you who don't know, I just moved to a new city. I moved over outside of Portland in the Wilsonville area over to Bend, Oregon into Central Oregon. And I'm now living in my own place. So I have actually a separate room where I have my office set up now, which has been a game changer from my old place where I had my desk, my office basically in my bedroom. And it's actually been huge for my productivity. So it's actually been really, really nice. Also, if you don't know what I do for work, I own a video editing agency. So my clients are kind of all over the country, a couple in Canada. So all of my work and uh, employees, my whole team is remote. So it's not like I was relying on any local clients for work. So it actually made the move a lot easier, but Work definitely took a little bit of a hit early on. It was just tough kind of getting situated and getting settled and everything like that. But luckily most of the stuff is kind of automated and it is monthly recurring. So uh, that actually helped out quite a bit. But being in a new place, having my own office and being in a city that's like very inspiring, a lot of really cool people around that I've been working with, it's actually been going really, really well. All right, next question from Daniel Patty, one of my clients. How long did it take to grow your stash? So I did no shave November. Uh, it was just kind of something just for fun, honestly. And then one of my buddies who also has a mustache said, well, I had my beard that, you know, I had a pretty good mustache going on. I was getting really tired of the beard. I was ready to shave it. So I just trimmed it all the way down and left the stash and here we are. So I would say the stash took me about like a month, month and a half to grow. All right, next question. What are your goals for 2023? So this actually is something that I haven't done yet and I need to do before the new year start, which is write down my goals for 2023. My 2022 goals, I did a pretty good job with. Honestly, I hit all of them minus one. So my 2022 goals were to hit 150K in revenue in my business, which I did. Uh, my goal was to have, I think either 10 or 15 editing clients at the beginning of the year. That was my goal and I blew through that in like two months and ended up setting it to like 30 and then I hit that and then I set it to 50, which I didn't hit, but still blew past two of my initial goals there, which were awesome. Next goal was to travel more. That's something where I did a lot of traveling for work before, but I wanted to do more stuff on my own terms. And this year I actually traveled quite a bit. I went to uh, Houston for a deadlift meet which was awesome, uh, took some time off for that, uh, kind of explored the city and then spent some time in Dallas afterwards with some friends, and that was great. Then I went to Jackson in August with my family and took like a whole week off from work and just kind of explored Jackson and had a good time with family there and that was great. And then went back to Dallas actually for one of my buddy's weddings and spent like a week there with friends as well. So definitely traveled a lot more on my own terms this year, which was a lot of fun and hoping to plan some more trips like that in 2023. Matt Ligotti asks, what are your company's holiday hours or days off? So my team has off actually the Friday before Christmas Eve, uh, the Monday of Christmas, and then the Monday of New Year's because everything's kind of weird this year with the holidays being on Sunday. So I'm just kind of giving my team those extra days off over the weekend. They've been working really hard. I feel like they've earned them and want to give them some time to spend with their family and loved ones for the holidays. Bobby asks, is cereal a soup, LOL? Seriously though, your thoughts on AI like chat GPT? Uh, cereal, in my opinion, is definitely not a soup. Soups need to be hot. If you eat your cereal hot, you're kind of a weirdo. So, but thoughts on AI like chat GPT? Um, gonna be huge gonna be a huge asset to creatives going into the future i definitely don't believe that ai is going to take over creative roles uh it's not near perfect and i don't really think it ever will 
be able to um, take away that human element, at least not in the near future, but I do think it's gonna be a huge asset to creatives to be able to utilize some sort of script writing features, um, video editing features, stuff to really make things happen faster may not replace somebody, but it can definitely speed up the process a lot. Bo asks, quantity or quality? And I'm gonna assume this comes to video content. And honestly, this is a really hard question because it does depend on the type of content, the platforms, and everything like that. There definitely needs to be a minimum level of quality. That's what I tell a lot of my clients is, it doesn't matter if you're filming with your iPhone or a professional camera, you just need to meet a minimum level of quality. Once you do that though, it is definitely a quantity game because you'll see, especially with short form content, not every video is going to perform extremely well, but if you can give yourself enough opportunities, you're gonna hit those high performing videos more frequently because you're putting out more content. All right, Haley asks, what should student photographers or videographers know about the real world? First off, the real world compared to college, traditional education, anything like that is so incredibly different. You really don't learn the real life lessons until you get into the real world and start working. I personally was never really a fan of school, didn't love school. I think a lot of it was because I kind of saw through a lot of the bullshit and I realized that a lot of stuff that they're teaching in college or school really didn't apply to the real world because you're really just studying for a test to get a grade that in the end didn't really matter. Um, so I would say if you're a videographer or photographer student in college right now or studying, then you should get as much real world experience as possible. So whether that's meeting up with other local creatives to work on projects, whether that's just going out to film stuff for people for free, you wanna get that real world life experience because that's something that you can't really get in the classroom. Brianna asks, when are you coming back to Texas? Brooks will behave much better, I promise. So that's who I stayed with in Dallas, my old actually neighbors from Wilsonville. Um, I'll be coming back soon for sure. Um, it's always good hanging out with you guys and I think I need some warm sunshine. Although I guess it's been really cold in Texas lately. So I don't know if it's still warm there, but definitely need to get down and play some golf for sure. All right, my man Marcelino asks, what's your proudest clip or photo and why? And honestly, the first thing that comes to mind with this is this photo right here that I got um, in Las Vegas last year filming for BMR. I never really did a ton of photography work. Video has always been my background and that's what I was pretty much always hired to shoot. But when I started shooting on the 1DX Mark II, I got a lot more inspired to take some more photos. And at the NASCAR race, I just really wanted to test out shooting some cool NASCAR photos because you don't always get that opportunity. And I got this one that I'm super stoked about. I definitely want to get this framed. I think I'm gonna get it printed on metal. Um, but yeah, this photo is by far probably one of my favorite photos that I've ever taken. All right, then Cody asks, what is your personal record for most short form videos you've edited in one day? Um, honestly, I don't wanna know and I don't think you wanna know either. Um, it was probably a lot. It was probably close to 15, I wanna say, um, if I was just trying to grind and just crank out a ton of videos at one time. Uh, when I was first starting my agency, but now I am super blessed that I have an awesome team around me that helps me put out about 400 plus videos every single month for all of our clients. So we have a great team. We put out a ton of video content every month and I definitely couldn't do it without them. All right, and that wraps up all of the questions. Thank you so much for tuning in, watching this video. And if you did ask any of these questions on Instagram, thank you. If you aren't following me on Instagram already or any other platforms, make sure you hit the links below and check me out on other socials. If you enjoyed this video, please smash that thumbs up button. It definitely helps a ton. And if you aren't already, please subscribe so you can check out future videos. I'm trying to drop one every single week rolling into 2023. So hopefully I will see you very soon. And that's it. We'll see you later. I need to get a thumbnail. What was a controversial question that I was asked? Maybe my favorite photo I've ever taken? I could do that. Cool. Yeah, then I'll just do like a black rectangle. Sick.